Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon for those of you who may be watching me in different uh, places and time zones. I am Leo Brown, and welcome to another edition of Psychic's Perspective. So we are rounding out our Legends Perspective. I hope you guys have had a great week thus, uh, well, not thus far. We're actually at the end of the week. Uh, but I hope you had you guys have had a good week. Um, if you would love, if you would be so kind, please like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, become a sugar bear, honey. Meet other sugar bears, mingle, relax yourself, get a drink, you know, get you some chicken, you know, or some bacon wrap, you know, sausage. Uh, anyway, and pull up a seat. So today's perspective is going to be on singer and actress. Miss Frida Payne. Now, for those of you who do not know who Frida Payne is, I implore you to familiarize yourself with her catalog. She's another one who's a very diverse woman. She started out actually wanting to be a jazz singer with the likes of people like Nancy Wilson and um, let me think, maybe like Carmen McRae and uh, people like that. And um, I don't want to say Sarah Vaughn, because I think Sarah Vaughn was before her. But like, you know, uh, Aretha Franklin, people like that. So when you think of Frida Payne, she definitely is in that arena. And I have to say, for someone who is, I believe she's in her, no, I don't want to say, I don't want to say her age, because I actually don't know. You know? But I will say this, Miss Payne, you look fantastic. She like, I've never seen a woman so ener so energetic. She's so energetic. Um, if you've ever watched The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, she's actually in that. If you've seen her in uh, Living Single, she played one of the, like, the naughty neighbors who was trying to seduce Overton. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that she's been in. But she's most known for her hit Band of Gold and Bring the Boys Home and things like that. My personal favorite of her trajectory in, in, uh, of her career when it comes to singing, there are two albums that I just love. Um, one is on the inside. There's a song called Sexy is a State of Mind. Love that song, because that's like an affirmation for me. And uh, there's another album that she did called Pain and Pleasure, or Pleasure and Pain. I might have it wrong. I might have it backwards. And um, there are two songs that I sing at the top of my lungs, and that would be Is Yours to Have, and um, Shadows on the Wall, honey. And she's another one that has a fabulous range. Um, she now has ventured more into the jazz arena, jazz big band arena. Um, she actually did a cover of the song Muddy Water um, a couple of years ago. And like I said, honey, she still looks good. She is still fabulous. If you follow her on social media, you can see her doing her yoga. Okay, yoga is the key, y'all, for real. Yoga, water, and vitamin D. Uh, but yeah, that's the key, honey. So we're going to get into a psychic perspective on Miss Frida Payne. Miss um, Payne, if you ever get to see this, I thank you for watching, number one, and for, and I hope that this perspective gives you some clarity. I hope it makes sense because once again, and, and if you hear it, that's my wash machine in the back. Um, but it's not about me, it's about you. Um, so I hope this makes sense for you. I hope it resonates. And for those of you who would like a reading, if you like what I do, you like my work, please, you more um, you are more than welcome to go to my website, psychically.com, get a reading. You can follow me on all forms of social media, except Periscope, TikTok, and Snapchat. Not my cup of tea, not my gig. But all the other forms of social media, follow me. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's get started. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm setting this up here. All right. Okay. So, all right. So the first thing that I'm just gonna say that I'm hearing 
that I'm being downloaded is, I feel like with Miss Payne, um, you really are at a point where what I hear in my head is you saying like, I still have life in me. I still have things I want to do. Um, I still have goals I want to set. Like I literally hear you saying, I want to get out and go. I want to travel. Like I, I get you being antsy and you being like, I want to travel. I want to do things. And it's not that you're at home, but I feel like there's more goals you want to accomplish. I literally see you making a list and you're just checking things off and you're like this, this, this. Um, I want to say 2023, 2024, I get like a one woman show coming up for you. I see you touring, like a lot of different things. And a lot of your stuff is going to take place overseas. And I'm getting a connection between you and Sheila Ferguson. If you guys know the three degrees, if you know that group, Sheila Ferguson was, um, I wouldn't say she was the lead, but she was one of the singers. And I, I see like you and Sheila either like befriending each other or working together, one of the two, because I literally see you girl, like, and you're literally laughing and you're like, yeah, girl, you remember, like you, get, you guys are having such a good fun time, or as the, you know, as the gays call it, a key, a kiki, honey, y'all having a good old fashioned kiki. And, um, you know, you guys are just having a good time. And I, and I, and for some reason, I, I really do see you working with her, um, eventually. Or you guys working together? I also pick up around you. You venturing into the dance arena because I hear the boom, 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 boom. I hear that kind of music, uh, like or the Euro, like Euro dance. Um, I feel like there's just so many things that you want to do. I also see you writing, either writing an autobiography or just you writing. I feel like you journal a lot. Like you're very, you live in your mind. And you're one of those people where if you can see it in your head, you can create it in life. Um, I also pick up something to do with a move. I'm feeling like you're either going to move or you're going to improve on your home. And it's funny because what I'm picking up around you in terms of what the cards are telling me, I think that's what this is actually telling me. That right now, you're not in a bad space because I'm going to show you the cards I'm receiving. So I, the first card I got was the five of wands in reverse. So what this is telling me is that when it comes to business and contracts and things that you want to do, though you're raring to go, you're like, ah, let me stop and think. Let me, let me, I see you reading every inch of, of your contracts and being like, let me dot every I across every T. Let me make sure this benefits me, not just now, but in the future. Because I do see that, that um, I don't want to say retirement. I don't pick that up around you. But I do see you wanting to slow things down. And I'm getting almost like a cabaret. Very intimate. Very, very, where you can go into the audience and you can talk to people and they can talk to you. I get that kind of, like a supper club kind of thing. Um, so I see you wanting to do things like that too, as well as the big tours. So a mix of up. But I think as time goes on, I see you wanting to make sure that everything works out for you in your favor. Um, and I'm also getting, like I was saying before, I feel like there's a lot to do with your home as well. Either you moving or home improvements. That's what I pick up around you. Like home, like you either, I feel like there's something to do with you and living by the ocean. And it kind of reminds me of like a Cape Cod or a Maine kind of house. And I just see you being like, this is what I want. I want sanctuary. And it feels like where you are now, you about grown it. So I feel like you are going to end up moving because I this is the card I was picking up too that represents the issue, which is the Ten of Pentacles. So what this is telling me is that it's not that you are going through financial issues or things like that. It's just that the, it's just that things are changing, and you're like you're trying to navigate said changes, and sometimes navigating said changes can be very frustrating because I I get a sense that you feel like they hear they okay. They hear me, but I'm not being listened to. That's what I'm, I'm hearing you say, because I'm hearing you complain, and you're like, they hear me, but they're not listening to me, and I don't like that. <laughs> um, I also see you taking care of your health as well, because I do see you either running or like doing something like a row machine or something like that, and I'm seeing you paying attention to your joints. That's why yoga is, is really important for you, but I'm seeing you pay attention to, to your joints a lot. I'm seeing you watch certain things you do, watch how you eat. You're not strict with it, but you're out here 
everything in moderation. I hear a lot of that. So you're, you're definitely, your health is very important to you now. Um, and it feels like to me, for the last, I get one and two. So I want to say the last two years. And of course, because we've been dealing with the pop of pepperoni. Um, but I feel like this has really made you take a step back, you know, and really reevaluate what's important to you and what's not. And not just in terms of being on the stage, but family, friends. I pick up you reconnecting a lot, calling people and being like, girl, I hadn't talked to you and I don't know how long we need to catch up, you know, and you really, you know, but I also pick up a lot of grieving and you mourning people that you knew and that you've lost. And you're like, God, I miss them and the times I've had. And that's why I say, I, I, I honestly pick up that you might end up writing an autobiography or a memoir uh, pretty soon, because I feel like you're, you're really at a point where you're like, I really want to tell my story because it feels like people know you but they know the image. They don't know Frida. You know what I mean? Like they know Frida Payne, the artist. They don't know Frida Payne, the person. Um, let's see. So um, the next card I got for you was the world. And the world is all about completion. The world is all about things just coming together and people feeling like at peace. So in, in your case in Spain, that definitely is true. It feels like you're really at like a, a good piece. So you're making peace with a lot of, for me, it feels like a lot of adolescent trauma. I get the number 11 around you, 11 to 17, because I get 11 and 14, 11, 14, and then I get 17. I don't know what happened in, in that time, but I get those numbers. And it feels like to me, you're really grappling or wrestling, you know, like you're making peace with it. You're exercising a lot of your demons. And that's good. And I think that maybe that's another reason why I see you connecting with family and learning to forgive and forgiving yourself. That's really what it's about, too. Um, so you're, you're doing the work, baby. You are doing the work. And I applaud you for that. Um, let's see here. So the last two cards that I got for you, Miss Payne, and I'm calling her Miss Payne out of respect because I don't know her like that to call her free. Um, you know, I love me some free to paint, honey, but I'm not gonna call you free to like that, honey, because we ain't friends. But <laughs> we could be though. Anyway, so um the last two cards that I got were the six of cups and the four of cups. So what this is telling me is that the four of cups deal with you feeling like, how do I put it? You're you're putting on a brave front, but you're not really as happy as you could be. But in a way, what this is telling me is that it will be helpful for you to open up, for you to show your vulnerability, for you to show your emotions, and for you to make peace. Because the Six of Cups is also dealing with making peace and reminiscing and making peace with the past, making peace with, with aspects of self that you kind of left behind, uh, the inner child, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I feel like that's what I'm picking up around you. Like, you're really dealing with that. And that's not always easy because... What I'm hearing in my head is you say, like, people expect me to be glamorous and sexy all the time. And I'm really a shy, I'm kind of a little girl in a lot of ways. I'm really shy. And I really am very quiet and to myself, except when it's time to work. Because I see you in the studio with an orchestra or a band, and you're like, okay, you're on it. But when, when, when you're not having to work, you're very much like, no, I'll just sit back and just you know, relax and let you guys do what you do, you know, but when it comes time for Frida to become free to pain, then you're like, okay, bam, and it feels like now you're really learning to not only let go of certain things that have happened for you or certain things that have, that have been, I feel like certain things that have ha not just happened to you, but certain things that you've carried, because unfortunately in life, we tend to carry a lot of other people's burdens. We do, like we, everybody does, even me. We tend to do that. And it feels like you're letting go of a lot of stuff that isn't yours anymore. So that's why I say, I think it's good that you're doing that. So keep showing that, keep showing vulnerability, keep connecting. And I see you connecting with your fans, with colleagues in the industry. I see you doing some songwriting as well. I see you wanting to work with other artists and help them as well so i'm getting a lot of different things producing like you've got a lot of things under your belt really and i and, and i also hear you saying like 
people often count me out or they often see me as a pretty face. And I'm more than that. And you are. And I feel like the next two to three years are going to be very bountiful for you. Like, very, very topsy turvy, but in a good way. In a good way. So just enjoy the ride. But at the same time, what I'm also being told is save for a rainy day, put things away, invest well, invest in yourself, learn to say no, learn to stop when needed. And most of all, listen to that body, honey. That body is beautiful, but when that body be like, listen, girl, Miss Freedom, okay, I'm done. Learn to be like, okay, I can't push myself, and you'll be just fine. And I don't know why I'm getting this, but I get a connection with you and um, Candy Staten as well. I don't know why I'm picking it up around you. I don't know if you guys know each other or if you guys tour in the same circles, but I feel like for some reason, there's a connection with you and her, and I would not be surprised if you didn't do something gospel-centered or gospel. Um, uh, maybe not, a, I don't see it as an album, but maybe as a single. And I just see you doing something spiritual. So that's what I was getting for you, Miss Payne. So Miss Payne, honey, I thoroughly hope that you've enjoyed this reading, this perspective. I hope that it made sense. I hope that it gave clarity, and I hope that you can receive it with an open heart and an open mind. Uh, for those of you who watch, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. If you would like a reading, log on to my website, psychicleo.com. That's psychicleo.com. I'm also going to put Ms. Payne's information in the description box, and you can um, also find all my social media channels below. So until next time, my sugar bears, be good to yourselves. Love yourself, stay safe, stay healthy as you possibly can, and I will talk to you soon. All right?